hey guys welcome back to all and on law this is quick internal medicine and today I'm gonna talk very briefly about the waves of EKG what are the normal waves of EKG so we know the we have what you call a 12 EKG leads okay let me draw and show you okay if this is a heart we have a lead three limb leads three chest leads and six okay oh sorry right okay this is a lead one lead two lead three okay then we have what you call this is a V L left shoulder and this is what you call A V uh, R right shoulder and this is A V F A V F foot okay and we have the chest leads V1 V2 V3 V4 v5 and v6 okay so this is a basic thing that you should know okay guys so we have 12 ekg leads okay so when recording an ekg so what are the things that you should always check whether the machine is properly calibrated or not what's that look at the speed of the paper the speed of the paper is correct or not it should be what you call a standard is known as a 25 millimeter per second is a standard 25 millimeter per second okay it's a standard remember and the calibration mark uh, is nothing but what you call it should be around 10 millimeter equals 1 milli old okay why we do because so that the wave height can readily be converted into more meaningful voltage that's why so these are the leads you know very well why we take 12 leads why not 3 why not 2 why not 6 because if you have more number of uh, uh, leads uh, means uh, you can see the heart in very different and very more angles okay so you will get the exact picture what is happening inside the heart okay guys so this is the best 12 ekg leads are the standard what you call for EKG um, investigation okay so now let's start today's topic I'm talking about as you know the waveform is if P Q R S T and let me okay P Q R S and T right so the P wave I'm, today I'm gonna talk about what is the cause for a P wave what is the cause for formation of PR interval QRS complex ST segment T wave QT interval and the U wave okay so the P wave is nothing but it is due to what you call atrial depolarization atrial depolarization remember it. the P wave is caused due to atrial depolarization right guys and the PR interval, the PR interval is here or here, the PR interval, okay. The PR interval, what does it indicate is it's a start of what you call atrial depolarization to the start of a ventricular depolarization. Means atrial depolarization to ventricular depolarization, okay guys, depolarization, right. So remember. PR interval indicates it's a start of atrial depolarization to the start of ventricular depolarization. Now we have another important complex that's the QRS complex. This is really very important. QRS complex. Okay. This QRS complex. QRS complex. Okay. Um, QRS complex it indicates it's due to the what you call ventricular depolarization remember ventricular depolarization okay whereas the PR interval is to the start of depolarization ventricular depolarization but QRS complex indicates a ventricular depolarization now we have another one segment that's known as ST segment 
S T segment. Okay. S T segment. The S T segment is nothing but is a pause in what you call a ventricular electrical activity before the repolarization. It's a pause in ventricular electrical activity before repolarization. So it's nothing. Okay, guys, it's a pause. Remember. Then we have a positive wave known as a T wave, and T wave is due to what you call uh, ventricular repolarization. Ventricular uh, repolarization, right, guys? Okay. Right now we have another one interval that's known as a QT interval. Okay, QT interval. So QT interval over here. So the. QT is nothing but QT interval is nothing but it's a time taken by the ventricular depolarization and the repolarization. It's a total time. It is taken by what you call ventricular depolarization and the ventricular repolarization. So okay, so remember the QT interval is such a, such a important what you call uh, uh, interval uh, in EKG. Okay, so it's a total time taken by the ventricular depolarization and ventricular repolarization. Right guys. And we have another wave, if you see over here, as soon after the T wave is a U wave. Possibly it's not, you know, it's usually not seen, but it's seen in the anterior chest list like a V2 to V4. Okay, so if it's seen, there are causes for that, like uh, what you call low potassium in the body, hypokalemia, hypercalcemia or hyperthyroidism could be caused for that. So, remember the U waves, they are soon after what you call T waves and... Uh, the the peculiarity of u waves means uh, they are they follows as the preceding t wave means if the t wave is a positive they will be positive if the t waves are inverted then the u wave will be inverted okay guys so remember u waves are due to certainly it's, it's, it's what you call is uncertain possibly it could be due to the what you call interventricular septal repolarization interventricular septal repolarization okay guys interventricular septal repolarization and the other possible cause for the u wave formation on ekg could be slow ventricular repolarization slow ventricular repolarization so these are the two causes possible possible causes for formation of a u wave on ekg the two important points i'm going to talk about over here are remember the sa node and the av node the depolarization of sa node and the av nodes they do not detect or they do not form any wave on EKG. EKG is unable to what you call detect the waves by depo by the depolarization of SA and the AV nodes. Okay, guys. So this is regarding the brief idea about the causes for the formation of waves in EKG. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care.